so what I'm going to do is um, break this up and kind of focus on the four main titles or areas of the Farm Bill. And what I'm going to do for each one is provide kind of a very brief, big picture, kind of national level, uh, f federal level, if you will, background, and then try to get into more, more specifics in terms of how the programs in that area have worked in the most recent Farm Bill. And then in cases where there have been some changes that we think we should comment on at this point, we'll talk about, um, again, how they'll impact, uh, the impacts that they might have or, or things to think about at a more local level uh, here for farmers in the state of Illinois. So big picture overall, um, I'm gonna talk about the uh, commodity title, Title I, conservation title, Title II, the nutrition title, which is Title IV, and the crop insurance title, which is Title XI. These four titles of the 15-ish titles in the Farm Bill um, make up basically the entire budget. Okay, so the Farm Bill, um, on a, uh, from a budgetary standpoint, is about an 80 to $90 billion per year endeavor. Um, so close to a trillion dollars, $900 billion, $850 billion um, over the 10-year period that um, Congress focuses on in terms of uh, the budget side of, of negotiations and in, 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 uh, making changes to the, to the programs in those areas. Um, most of the room are probably already familiar, but just remind you that the bulk of the budget in the Farm Bill is in the nutrition title. It's about 75-25 nutrition and other, or 80-20 nutrition and other. Um, and then the remainder, again, is made up primarily of the commodity title, which is the farm programs, uh, the farm subsidy programs, the ARC and PLC program currently, marketing loan assistance program. Um, the conservation title, things like CRP, CSP, and EQIP, and then the crop insurance title, which uh, if you're a farmer in Illinois, you should be very familiar with. That's where your revenue and yield policies um, operate within uh, the risk management agency and the programs in that area. Okay, so again, some background. How have things gone in, under current law? So what this slide shows you is how the actual spending has compared to what the Congressional Budget Office estimated the current programs would cost over the five years of the current farm bill that we're just now getting towards the end of. Okay, so what this uh, figure shows us is that the commodity title of those four big budget titles is the only one that actually ended up having higher outlays, more spending than what was predicted back in 2014 when this piece of legislation uh, was enacted. All right, and that is, the, the story there is the, the fall in commodity prices and the large ARC payments, the large PLC payments for some commodities uh, that we experienced were greater than what was expected. All right, all three of the other big budget titles um, actually came in under what was expected, under uh, budget, I guess, is one way to look at it. Um, nutrition title being the, the biggest one, that's a result of um, kind of continued expansion of the economy. Um, Getting into nutrition, uh, what this chart shows you is the uh, large growth that we've seen in that program, consistent growth dating back to the 1970s in terms of the number of recipients in the program as well as the spending, the benefits that went out to those recipients that receive things like food stamps or SNAP program benefits as they're now called. Um, Main point here is that this, again, is the largest program in terms of dollars, but we also need to remember that as the largest program in terms of recipients. So if we look at this on a dollar per person basis, um, you know, that's, that's a much different picture than just focusing on the, um, the tens of billions of dollars that go out in aggregate to all recipients nationwide. It's also a cyclical program, cyclical with the general economy. So we saw participation increase dramatically, as we had the recession, Great Recession in 2008. Uh, participation peaked, and then since we've been in this expansionary phase, participation and spending has come down um, and is kind of projected to level off a bit from a spending perspective going forward. Uh, nutrition was a very controversial area in these Farm Bill negotiations. Uh, the House Farm Bill had a number of changes proposed in the nutrition, nutrition title. Uh, work requirements is something you've probably read in the news. Um, if, if you followed the Farm Bill debate at all, um, it was a very partisan dispute in the House. Um, but ultimately, those changes were all dropped in the conference committee. And the final Farm Bill that was signed yesterday does not include any of that, um, in, that in that legislative language. So 
it's basically business as usual or the nutrition title programs continuing on basically the same as they've, they've been defined and operated in the 2014 Farm Bill. Moving on to conservation, again, from a big picture national perspective, conservation um, has been a program that's been growing. Um, over the 2014 Farm Bill, between four and, fill, f four and five billion dollars in outlays, and that's uh, projected to grow um, to about a six billion uh, dollar per year program, split out mainly between conservation reserves, CRP, uh, the Conservation Stewardship Program, and the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, so CSP and EQIP. CSP and EQIP are our working lands program, so those are conservation practices applied to land that's still in production, and obviously CRP is the, the program that takes land um, out of agricultural production. In terms of those um, CRP programs, now looking a little bit more specifically at Illinois, Illinois is somewhat unique um, from, the, from the perspective of we are a relative heavy user of the working lands programs. And compared to other states, we actually utilize, farmers in the state of Illinois utilize the CSP program, or they have utilized the CSP program at a higher rate than farmers in other areas. Okay, CRP is obviously a big, a big part of the conservation benefits that flow to Illinois, um, but that, those working lands programs are very important. Okay, and that's important in terms of looking at what changed in the conservation title for the 2018 Farm Bill. So first on the CRP side of things, um, CRP is going to be expanded from 24 million acres to 27 million acres. And to address some of the issues surrounding CRP rental rates being too high, competing with cash rents in some areas, um, they are going to put more restrictive limits on what those CRP rental rates can be compared with cash rental rates experienced in the area um, in recent years. On the working lands program side of things, um, CSP is not completely eliminated, but um, it is, uh, the, for the working lands programs, they're shifting some of what was CSP funding into the EQIP program. Um, so the CS, any CSP contract that is current, that was signed this year, um, and it may even be extended for new signups into 2019, those will still continue to receive benefits throughout their five-year life but that program will kind of be sunsetting over the next uh, five-year period and, and, and dollars that would have been allocated to that CSP program are moving into, uh, into EQIP. Crop insurance, okay, again, big picture, crop insurance is approaching an $8 billion a year expected cost um, set of programs. Um, the vast majority of that is the premium assistance or the premium subsidies that, that farmers receive um, assistance with in paying for those premiums, um, as well as some uh, delivery administrative costs um, and other things, but premium assistance is the, is the big component there. Crop insurance for 2018 is largely unchanged, so good news there. That was kind of the, the hope that there wouldn't be any reduction in that premium assistance that farmers receive. Um, crop insurance is largely unchanged. Some, some, some things that are, uh, I think, viewed as a very positive changes uh, for farmers in the Midwest and Illinois is uh, some, some new language that kind of more uh, explicitly defines uh, the use of cover crops and how that can affect your crop insurance coverage on that land. So definitions for termination and then also uh, explicitly defining cover crops as a good farming practice. So if you have termination issues, um, that will not negatively impact your, 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 insur your insurability. Uh, the other item that we didn't, we didn't get on the slide here, um, but we do want to mention because it was actually uh, uh, kind of a joint effort with the Illinois Corn Growers and Jonathan and, and Gary Schnicke did some work on this to, to help get this in. There is a provision in the crop insurance title that will allow enterprise units to cross county lines. So currently enterprise units is just all of the land planted to a crop in a county. Um, under this new provision, you'd be able to combine your corn across county lines into a single enterprise unit. Could lead to some premium savings uh, for some farmers uh, who farm in multiple counties. And again, uh, actually is scored as a cost savings in the bill, which is positive um, in terms of you know, reducing uh, federal expenditures, as well as I think creating a, a benefit for, uh, for, for farmers that use crop insurance programs. And finally, um, the Commodity title. So again, big picture, 
Uh, the commodity title, uh, because of the programs we currently have, ARC and PLC, they're dependent on price levels and revenue levels in terms of what the actual support will be each year, the, the outlays, uh, the payments that farmers receive. So you can see here on kind of the left portion of the chart, those are years that we've realized spending in those programs, years that have passed. Um, and you can see that those are pretty cyclical, um, very large benefits uh, going out. Um, and I believe these are fiscal years, so you actually have to subtract two to uh, look at what crop year that represents. Um, so if you look at what's labeled as 16, 17, and 18 here, that's actually the 14, 15, and 16 crop years when we had relatively large ARC payments um, in places in the Midwest for corn and soybeans, um, and big PLC payments even for, for some of the other crops like wheat going on in those years as well. 19 and 20 represents crop years 17 and 18 in this figure, and that is driven mainly by the ARC guarantee coming down as we've had multiple years now of lower price levels um, and lower, um, lower payments for those programs to the crops that, that heavily adopted or heavily enrolled um, in that ARC option. Looking out ahead, um, commodities are projected to be kind of in the neighborhood of five or just over $5 billion a year um, going out for those ARC, ARC and PLC programs, marketing loan programs that are in that commodity title. All right, again, getting more specific to Illinois. In Illinois, mainly corn and soybeans and some wheat. Um, vast majority of farmers in Illinois chose the Art County program. Um, Art County, in terms of corn base, worked kind of how we expected it to. A lot of places in Illinois received relatively large payments in 14, 15, and 16. 17 and 18 payment levels in general have come down or been zero um, in a lot of areas, projected 18 payments um, as well. Um, soybeans, similar story. Some counties in Illinois and throughout the Midwest received larger payments in the early years of this farm bill. Um, but in 2017 and projected for the 2018 crop year, uh, much lower. Mo most counties in Illinois did not receive any um, ARCs, ARC County support um, on soybean base. Other challenges that have been going on for commodities, this has been mentioned in, in uh, Todd Hubbs' presentation this morning. Gary talked about this. Um, obviously, we've experienced um, a bit of a ride here with commodity prices this year. So this chart looks at central Illinois cash prices for corn and soybeans. You see the big decline that, that started basically end of May, early June. All of the tariff announcements um, that have occurred throughout that time have contributed to that decline. Um, but we've also had very large crops, um, which would be another contributing factor to the, to the drop in commodity prices that we've seen over the past um, six months. Um, market facilitation program was provided to kind of address the trade uh, side of that issue. Um, again, talked about this a few times already this morning. First round of payments went out earlier this fall. Uh, second round of payments was announced last week. Um, and it sounds like as of today, uh, some who, who at least have the direct deposit option for that may already be receiving that second round as early as today. Um, and they're trying, USDA is trying to get the second round of those payments out uh, for everybody uh, by the end of the year. Okay, so next few slides now are looking ahead to some of the changes within the commodity title. Um, so looking ahead, the outlook is for continued low price levels. Um, that means within this year in particular, we've got more expensive ARC and PLC programs than, than we thought we would at the beginning of the year. But again, moving forward, the level of support provided in that ARC program in particular is gonna decline as that revenue um, guarantee within that program has come down and adjusted to the new, uh, to the new lower commodity prices. A couple of points we wanted to make here. Um, first, the market facilitation program payments. This is the chart here just has the first round. So that, that's that $4.1 billion uh, number that you might see there in the last, in the bottom row of the chart in the MFP payment column. Um, more than 3.6 billion of that estimated to go out to soybeans alone. Um, and now we can double that number. So over $8 billion now going out in MFP payments um, in 2018. Compare that with about 3.2 million going out to the commodity programs that are permanently in place. Okay, so MFP was 
um, a much bigger source of support this year than, than what we have um, within, the, within the commodity title. Okay, changes. So 2014 Farm Bill was when those ARC and PLC programs were introduced. Everybody made a choice in 2014 in terms of which program they wanted to be covered under. That choice will be made again for the 2019 crop. Probably want to know when that choice is going to be made, so do I. Uh, USDA doesn't have the, you know, the specifics in terms of the implementation rules on that yet. Different from 2014 when that decision was locked in for the five years of that farm bill, this time election will be revisited in 2021. So the decision you make in 2019 is only for a two crop year period. You can make a change in, in 2021 if conditions change and you want to switch to the other program. A few changes on the yield side of Arc County. Um, first of all, they did clarify the, the county of location versus administrative county issue uh, with Art County, if you're familiar with that. Um, wherever the farm is located is the county where the coverage will be determined. So it's county of physical location moving forward. Um, they bumped it to an 80% plug yield uh, that you can use if you had really poor yields in your, in your county's five-year history. Um, and rather than prioritizing NAS yield information to define that five-year average for the ARC yield benchmark, they're prioritizing the use of RMA crop insurance yields. So the county crop insurance yields that RMA puts together. Other thing they're doing on the yield side is they're gonna be using a trend adjustment. Okay, so just like crop insurance uh, has the trend, trend adjustment, they'll be doing a, a similar adjustment on your five-year history for ARC county. All of those factors together should improve, um, at worst improve, uh, or at worst, it'll stay the same, but in most cases, it will improve uh, the, the, uh, the yield benchmark at the county level for that ARC program. PLC also has a change on the yield side of things, so there will be another opportunity to update your payment yields. So if you remember from 2014, the update option was 90% of your average yield from 2008 to 2012. The problem with that was it included 2012, okay, the drought year. So now what they're doing is they're allowing a new update option, which is a percentage of the 2013 to 2017 yield average. A little bit different here. Obviously, the time frame is different for your yield update option, but also the percentage of that yield that you get for your, for your optional update is different. Again, we don't want to get into any specifics here, but it looks like it's only going to be 81% of that average yield for corn, 81% of that average for soybeans, but it'll be up to 90% of that average for wheat. Again, we don't want to spend too much time this morning on, on where those numbers come from, but, but that will be the uh, yield update option you have um, starting, starting next year. Price side of things, um, PLC reference prices are going to be remain the same, 370 on corn, 840 on beans, 550 on wheat. But there is an escalator provision uh, built into that. So if market prices come up above those levels, come up high enough above those levels um, over a consistent period of time, the reference price can be increased above those minimum levels. All right. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about that either because as you'll see in the next few slides, that's going to be irrelevant probably for the next five years for corn, soybeans, and wheat. Um, the other thing that, to note on this slide is uh, from a price protection side of things, the marketing loan program, we are seeing an increase in loan rates. So for wheat, it's going from 294 to 338 starting next year. For the other feed grains, which were all set at 195, corn, uh, grain, sorghum, and barley, they're going from 195 to 220. And soybeans saw the, the largest uh, percentage uh, increase in its loan rate going from $5 to $6.20 per bushel. All right, so here's what I was saying about that escalator provision not really mattering or not looking like it's going to matter over the next five years for the crops that we care about here in Illinois. Um, the red line is the current reference price, 370. The purple line is what the escalator provision would say it is. Um, so whenever it's below it, it's, it's still going to be the 370. Whenever it's above it, it would be increased. Um, however, as you can see, the only time it would have, would have been above it is in the last farm bill. 
the first few years of the last farm bill. So the escalatory provision is nice in that it allows that reference price to come up if market prices come up, but it would have been better if we had it five years ago. It doesn't look like it's gonna, um, gonna trigger any higher reference prices um, for this farm bill. Same thing for soybeans, it would have helped out in 14, 15, and 16. Uh, same thing for wheat, um, but again, not looking like it, it will matter much in the coming uh, five-year period.